Hi, my name is Walter Wooten, and I will be doing my movie presentation on the origin of life, specifically the RNA world hypothesis. This topic interests me because it is a missing link between non-life and life, and as such is a key step in the plausibility of evolutionary theory. There isn't currently a widely accepted theory regarding the origins of life, and the actual origins will likely never be known. Uh, the role of science in evaluating the origin of life is not to determine what actually happened, but rather investigate plausible methods by which organic compounds evolved into living things. The principal idea behind the RNA world hypothesis is the many roles RNA can perform within biological material, primarily its ability to catalyze reactions. This catalytic activity causes reactions to occur that would generally not be possible. It speeds up and orients the reactants in a way which is favorable to a desired outcome. The discovery of ribozymes is the basis for the RNA world hypothesis because not only can RNA carry information, but it was now capable of catalytic activity. So, what needs to be explained by the RNA hypothesis? A method of taking organic compounds and producing RNA molecules capable of reproduction, heritability, adaptation, and variation. The earlier started with a bunch of elements floating around in a primordial soup, and there needs to be a method to combine those elements into more complex organic compounds. These organic compounds must then, under the right conditions, be capable of forming some type of RNA so that information can be stored and passed on, and primitive organisms can begin to implement natural selection. The atmospheric conditions present in the early Earth play a key role in the development of the initial organic compounds. One key difference from current atmospheric conditions is the lack of oxygen and gas in the atmosphere in early Earth conditions. Instead, the atmosphere was thought to be reducing, which provides a means of creating high-energy organic compounds like methane and ammonia. The early Earth atmosphere is thought to have been primarily composed of nitrogen, with the presence of water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, and ammonia. The specific ratios are speculative, and since it is not possible to return to measure atmospheric composition, we will have to settle for what geologists can extrapolate from studies of ancient rock formations. Another important aspect is location. Even today, the terrain diversity from place to place is staggering. Many different environmental conditions are considered for the formation of the first life forms. Oceans are a favorable choice due to the aqueous environment and the presence of hydrothermal mounds, which provide temperature gradient as well as rock formations that could shelter the growing peptide chains from competitive reactions. However, some stages of RNA development are adversely affected by the presence of water, so hot springs which evaporate at crucial stages of development are also considered. Certain clay formations have proven especially interesting with respect to RNA formation and polymerization. Experiment has shown that the presence of fatty acids, clay, and RNA molecules can produce an RNA breeding ground where RNA synthesizes spontaneously. Another very important constituent is deep time. From the time the Earth's crust solidified to the Great Oxidation event, there was hundreds of millions of years for these chemicals to find each other and form into self-propagating life forms. This amount of deep time can fairly easily account for the unlikelihood of RNA synthesizing in early Earth conditions. Since the formulation of the RNA world hypothesis, a great number of experiments have been conducted in an attempt to determine plausible methods for the propagation of life. The Miller-Urey experiments, conducted in 1953, basically put water, molecular hydrogen, methane, and ammonia in a flask and applied electricity. This produced a host of organic compounds, among which were amino acids and nucleic acids. This was not thought possible before this point, and sparked research into the possible chemical evolution of life. More recent research has been conducted by Dr. Sostak, who leads a lab with Harvard University and has been trying to recreate life in prebiotic conditions. His research to date has accomplished a great deal, such as creating a ribozyme which copied up 20 nucleotides with a high degree of accuracy. He also used fatty acids to form bubbles, known as vesicles, which were used as cell membranes. In conditions similar to the rocks near hydrothermal mounds, which have pores on the order of 100 nanometers, these vesicles would grow and divide. Also, by including a certain kind of clay, the rate of vesicle formation was increased a hundredfold. Another experimental result produced by the Sostak lab was that in a certain mixture of fatty acids, RNA, and clay, the clay is capable of causing RNA to spontaneously assemble. This combination is depicted in this fluorescently enhanced image. It shows the yellow RNA encased in the green vesicles. A more recent advancement by Poner, Garland, and Sutherland was published in Nature in May of 2009. They were able to synthesize pyrimidines in prebiotically plausible conditions. They created cytosine through a simple four-step reaction. They were then able to create uridine through exposure of the products to ultraviolet light. 
The next steps in the validation of the RNA world hypothesis will be to synthesize purines. After that, all that will be left is to make the jump from synthesizing RNA and ribozymes to creating life forms in the laboratory.